So what I want to talk about in this video is how we can go about applying App Locker via Intune. So we're going to push it out using a policy from the cloud. Now the idea with App Locker is an approach to whitelisting applications and basically preventing uh, unknown or undefined applications from running on a device. So here I am on a device, I've logged in as a normal user here, you'll see that in their download directory I have an exe that I can run and that uh, successfully executes. So what we want to do is we want to be able to prevent this from happening uh, using AppLocker. So what we'll need to do first is we'll need to uh, log out of this user and then log in as an administrator. Now the important thing to remember here is that this device is joined directly to Azure AD so it's already gone through uh, the complete enrollment process. So what I'm going to do is log into this uh, exactly the same machine as the uh, administrator in this case and then I'm, what I'm going to do is firstly create the app locker policies and then what I'm going to do is go in and uh, basically then upload those or set a policy that will allow me to run those or push those out directly using Intune. So what we need to do is put all this in uh, basically to the virtual machine here and we'll log in now as the administrator and we'll see a different uh, different desktop. Now, remember that the way that AppLocker works is that it's going to be set up so the administrator has uh, no restrictions and the restrictions will only apply to a normal user of uh, the box, okay? So here we've logged in as the administrator. So what we need to do firstly here uh, is basically go in and let's go in and generate the policies. Now the way that we create app locker policies is we go in and run the local security policy option there. You'll see then we go into application control policies. We'll see that there is uh, app locker in there. Now before we go in and create the policies, the first thing to do is go into our services and make sure that the service that governs this, the identity service, so you'll see here, here is the application identity service that will basically help us with or allow AppLocker to operate correctly. You'll see that it's currently not running. So let's go in and start that, make sure that that is started. Okay, so now that it is started, let us close that and go back to AppLocker. So step one here is going to be to go in and look at the properties at the root here and make sure that we select the option to configure and enforce. Now remember, if you want, you can also set this to uh, audit if you wish. In this case, we're going to set it to enforce. Now, the idea with AppLocker is we need to create some base policies and then create our uh, deny. So we need to create all our allows first and then deny. So what we're going to do is go into execution rules, right mouse click, and we're going to create the default rules. We're going to do the same here with the packaged app rules. So we're going to create those default rules. Now, as mentioned, what we're going to do is just to demonstrate this. In this example, we're going to go in here and manually create a uh, deny rule. All right. So let's go in here and select deny for everybody. All right. Let's go in here and it's a publisher and let us go to browse. Now the file that we're looking for will be in our Windows directory. So let's go into our Windows directory, then go into our system uh, 32. And then what we're going to look for uh, is the mshta uh, .exe file. And we want to basically deny that. So scroll down through uh, all the options here uh, with the files. Uh, until we come to the location here for MSHTA. So I'm getting close. Here it is here. So we want to basically stop this for, from executing for everybody. Again, I can bump this one level back uh, just so it captures all the versions. Go next, go next, and then go create. So this will now create our deny rule. So we have our all our allows and that one deny rule. Now, before when we deployed this we could do this on a standalone machine, but we want to deploy this with a policy. So the way to do that, once we've got our policy set up on this machine here um, as our base, we're going to right mouse click and I'm going to export the policy. Now that's going to want to export to an XML file. So let me go in and put this into uh, a XML file here. All right. 
So we've now ex exported those policies. So let us go in and have a look at this uh, XML file. So what I'll do in this case is I'm going to open it with Notepad just to make it a bit easier to see what's going on. So here is the total XML file. Now what you'll notice here is that we have something here that has our rule collection. Okay, and there is the end of the rule collection for our EXEs, and then we have a rule collection for our MSIs, DLLs, uh, APXs, and so on. Now, what we're going to need to do is to put this in uh, each, we have to separate these out to put these into our Intune environment. So what we're going to need to do is, for example, we're going to need to firstly just take the EXEs, and then so on. So I'll show you how to do that. So once you've got the, X, the uh, XML uh, file, ready what we next need to do is go in and log into our uh, endpoint manager uh, environment basically as an administrator all right so let's go into our endpoint uh, manager here we will again have to uh, log in all right so all set up ready to go here now what we need to do is we need to go into our devices here on the left and it will be via what's called a configuration profile. Now what we'll need to do is go in here and create a custom configuration profile for our Windows 10 platform. Let's select that and the profile type we'll select from the templates and we'll select the custom option here. So we'll give this a name. So let us call this, let us call this app locker. So we know what it's all about. And then we need to go in here and we need to add our details. Now as mentioned we're going to have to break this up into uh, individual components here. So what I need to do is give that a name and then the next thing I'll need to do is actually get the OMA uh, URI. Now what I've done here is I've already got those uh, here so you'll see that I've grabbed these specifically so what I'll do is I will grab that okay and then go and paste that into here. Now, the idea here is that we want to set the data type to a string, okay, and now we need to go off to our app locker policy and grab everything associated, you know, with that. So in this case, we want to do the EXE, so what we're going to have to do is go into that XML file and select everything between the two rule collection types for EXE, in this case, and copy that, and then paste that, uh, basically, uh, into here and save that and then for example if we wanted to add another one what we do here is uh, rename it at locker a ppx and we would have to then go out and grab the uh, uri so let's go in here and grab this one okay and paste that into our location here so be very careful about making sure that uh, it's correctly formatted with the dot at the front and nothing at the end once again let's go in here and set this to string and finally go back to that xml file and let's just grab that last thing here so again you'll see what i need to do is grab from the beginning of rule collection type to the end there okay uh, copy that and let's go back to our intune console and paste it in now, obviously, the best idea would be to repeat that for uh, all the items there. I'm just going to do it to keep it short here. You'll see that I've basically done app locker for the EXE and also for the store apps there. So I go next. Now, the next thing is I want to assign this uh, to users and uh, groups if I want. Okay, so what I'm going to do is you'll see here I can assign it to all devices, which is what I'll do. So let me assign it to all devices just to make it nice and easy. Go next, go next create so this is going to go in and create the policy for me all right so that is pretty straightforward it's already done so what i need to do now is let's go in and have a look at the device status uh, it hasn't updated so let's go in and just have a look at the devices here so you can see that uh, there is a windows device which is uh, this pc basically so here it is here this is the desktop so again let's go back to our policies go down to our configuration profiles the only one that we've got in there, select that, look at the device status. 
All right, so again, it'll take a minute or two for uh, that to update. So I'm just going to pause uh, the video and make sure that the policy has been applied to the device. So as you can now see, the deployment has been reported as successful here in the console. So we know that that policy has been applied uh, to this desktop. So what I'm going to do now is log out as of the administrator and then go in and log in again as the user. So let me go in and sign out as the administrator and then sign into the box as the normal user. Okay, so let's go in here, other user, and put in the email address here. And put the password in. Now, what we'll do is we will firstly go in and try and run that EXE, which we know uh, was able to be run prior to the policy. Let's go in here and go to our downloads. And here is the uh, program. So let's double click on that. And basically you'll see here it has been blocked by our system administrator. So our app lock policies uh, are in operation. Now, if I'm a normal user, if I go in and try and look at the security policy, if I go in here and have a look, see that I don't have the rights to actually go in and run it or do anything like that. Okay, so again, we get no access to it, we can't make any changes. And again, it is being pushed down uh, by the uh, portal, the Intune portal to allow us to do that. All right, so let us go back to and log in as the uh, administrator. And we'll just have a bit of a quick look around at uh, what's happening there for that user when it comes to uh, basically this policy. All right, so we need to uh, log in once again and let's put in the uh, email address and then go in and put in the super secret password again and we should be able to get back in as the uh, administrator of the box. So let's go in there. So in summary, what we did is we took and we generated the policies on a local machine. It can be any local machine that allows this. We then exported those to an XML file. We then took the parts of that XML file and we put them into an Intune uh, device configuration policy, a custom policy specifying the uh, different URIs in there. All right, so let's go in here and let's just have a look at the URIs again. Okay, so you'll see here that to do it for EXE, you need that particular URI uh, and so on. So the idea again, once you generate that XML file, you go in and copy out the items that I've mentioned between uh, those tags, and then you would put them into uh, the policy uh, using that as the URI specified. And again, if we go in and have a look at the XML file, just to see what the formatting is once again. So again, note that the boundary uh, for the EXEs or the policy type is going to be basically by rule collection. So if we go down here, let's maximize this so we can see it. So if we look here, you'll be able to see that <clears throat> if we take everything between the opening rule collection to the closing rule collection and we put that uh, in there for XE and then we'd repeat the same for MSI script DLL and APX okay so it's important again if we do the APX we select that not getting anything else or we will get a failure of that policy we then go into Intune put that in create that as a policy wait for that to sync with our environment and then those policies those app locker policies are then applied to the devices that we have selected and targeted with that policy. So the policy that we enabled here will block the majority for the average user, but allow an administrator to log into the same box and basically do their work here. So again, really easy to work with and push out. Now remember that the benefit of AppLocker is it can be targeted at individual users. You can separate out users and administrators have different sets of rights. You can also go in and customize the environment to select different files to include or exclude. 
best practice is to start with the default policies and then customize as you need. And as I mentioned, you export it to an XML file and you can use that as the base to import into Endpoint Manager and an Intune device policy to basically achieve device whitelisting. So with that, thank you very much for watching this video.